Good morning and welcome back to the latest edition of the Invest Talk Market Analysis for the week ending August 18th, 2023. Appreciate you all tuning in to this channel as well as our podcast, Invest Talk. I'm host Justin Klein, and today I'm going to title the video Seasonality and Poor Liquidity Reset Markets Back to Support. And that's really what this pullback has been, and we'll get into the details here in a little bit, but it's just a a natural part of the ebb and flow of markets and we'll discuss what to look out for over the next few weeks as we enter uh typically a tough part of the the year right uh with, with september now the economic data came out here's retail sales excluding motor vehicles that was up one basically one percent month over month that's a pretty good move in the month of july the best month really since january Right. So uh, the consumer continues to, to hang in there. Export prices did come back a little bit, only down 7.8% year over year. Uh, and this is this is typically leads the CPI by about three months. So don't be surprised to see maybe one or two more months of the CPI staying around the three level, maybe dipping down to two and a half or so. But it's going to be a lot tougher as we get into the fourth quarter, early part of next year, to get the CPI to get to that 2% level that the Fed wants to. Uh, I think it's we're still kind of in this more elevated kind of 3 to 5% range is probably uh, the, the range we're, we need to get used to for inflation, as opposed to the 1% to 2% that we were used to pre-pandemic. Now, import prices, that was also a tick up year over year to negative 4%. Uh, but Still, you're in a somewhat forward-looking deflationary environment uh, or disinflationary environment for the near term due to uh, the, the, the tightening policy out of the government. Now, Fed business survey, uh, that one ticked a, a positive for the first time, geez, really since September of last year. So the at least in the, the New York Fed, the New York region, business looks to be looking up uh, a little bit. For the first time in a year, U.S. building permits month over month that was positive after a big negative mark in the month of July, and the home builders, which I'll show you in a second, they certainly uh, started to roll over. So that might be an indicator that although the housing prices are have been holding up, the home builders are doing well because they're the marginal inventory. Well, maybe there's some dynamics that means the, that there'll be less demand for those new homes. And, and so uh, something to watch out for. Uh, U.S. industrial production, that ticked up nicely as well, up to 1% year over year. Uh, sorry, month over month. Um, so you're starting to see a nice solid uptrend really since the beginning of the year. So the industrial side of the economy still is relatively robust. Uh, a lot of people focus on the the unemployment claims like new claims for unemployment i don't tend to watch that though what i tend to watch for is this the continuing claims for unemployment because it's not about how many people file for unemployment insurance every every week if they go out and a month later they get a job yeah you're out for a month you collected some checks from the government for for unemployment and you're back to your old ways right you're you're probably making similar money and your lifestyle isn't changing you know too dramatically and and thus uh, spending isn't tra- changing too dramatically but if you lose your job and you're out of the job for now three months and six months and a year right and suddenly you know you dwindle through some of your savings you exhaust your credit cards etc and then that becomes a bigger issue so i always focus on the continuing claims and that has started to tick up here to the highest level uh, since well i guess j- early july so uh but something to watch to see if you get a breakout to the upside this has been a general downtrend you got a little bit of tick up in early july and then uh you know a redux lower uh in late July into early August, but that did tick up here in this latest week. So something I'll be watching for going forward. Uh, On the Fed announcements, you're still kind of in this odds of very very high odds that September pause, right? 89% that it'll be a pause. This is their range right now, five and a quarter to five and a half. That'll be a pause in, in September. There is a 33% chance that they will raise rates in November, but that's November. That's a ways off. And based on seasonality, you're likely to see some volatility between now and then. So 
could there be another uh, rate increase then? That's certainly possible, but still relatively low. And December, you have about a 60% chance that this is going to be a pause and an 8% chance there'll be a cut by the end of the year and a 29% chance there'll be one more hike, only a 3% chance there'll be two hikes by the end of the year. And what's interesting here, or not that interesting, is that uh, we didn't really change week over week. If you look at the data, the odds for each each outcome were relatively same a week ago. So this wasn't a week where policy expectations shifted dramatically that would uh, impact the, the credit markets overall. So I wanted to highlight that. All right, let's uh, dig into the NYSE. So this one I like the, the most, obviously it's the broadest index. It's about 2,500 different names that it follows. So it gives a good broad view of the of the equity markets and this is a fib retrace from those banking crisis lows in march and we've pulled just pulled back to the 100 day moving average as well as the 382 retrace but if i zoom out what you'll see here is there's multiple factors that are giving support here so here are the fall lows remember how bad everything was in the fall and sentiment was really bad well if you do that did that work oh that did yeah, that did work. Okay. So let me go back to a daily. And what you can see here is this is the there's a confluence here, this green line. This is the two five retrace from the from the October lows. This is the two five retrace from the the March lows. But the, you have two, you have the three eight two from the March lows and the two five retrace from the October lows and the hundred day moving average. That's three factors. So from a technical perspective you almost assuredly was going to get some sort of a bounce here. The question will be, how strong is this bounce? Does it hold? If it doesn't hold, what you can see here is you have two levels down here, uh, which would be the 618 from the March lows and the 382 from the October lows. So that would probably be that next leg lower, which isn't too dramatic, right? You're at about... 15,750. This is at about 15,250. So about 500 points, another 3% down would not shock me at all before this is all said and done. This market pullback, seasonality, uh, late August, September into maybe early October. It's kind of what I'm expecting. Now, um, due to some flow dynamics, if we don't get a rollover by probably roughly Labor Day, Right, so we have two weeks. If we get a, you know, a, uh, maybe a bounce next week, and then we could get a rollover the following week, that would probably would bring us to that next level around fifteen uh, two fifty on the the, the NYSE. Um, that's that's what you're looking for. If we hold over the next couple of weeks, this could be the it. This could just be that pullback, modest, reasonable, something that should be expected every every year. You know, a, a eight. To 10 percent pullback uh in the markets overall um so something that i'll be watching uh, and again i think you still get a bounce here's the s p this also hit the roughly the two five retrace so you could get a bounce here that rolls over into here uh that wouldn't shock me either right that would be kind of in line with that nyse down to the 4200 level on on the uh, s p and once again that's a natural ebb and flow of the market Pulling back to 382 retrace. If a market's in an uptrend, it typically holds that level. So that would be a crucial level to see if that holds. If that holds, you're 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 still in a general uptrend. Um, so that's kind of what I'm looking at. Is could we hold this level? I think there's maybe a 40% chance we hold the around these levels over the next few weeks, and then this is kind of it for. Uh, and then you get into the holiday season, and you probably get a, a relatively good end of the year. I still think you get a relatively good end of the year, but where does where's the where's the bottom of, of this uh, this more recent move? Uh, that certainly could be around that 4,200 level on the S and P. Now let's go over to the Nasdaq. That's certainly been weaker than the S and P, and you can see that. Let me uh, run this. Let's cut this. Let's go to a weekly. And obviously, the Nasdaq has had a nice bounce off those year-end lows. Now I guess you can call it fall lows, and here now this would argue because this is already broken below the two five that you you go here right to this 12 7 on on the on the nasdaq most you know that, that that's probably like and this is why i say i think that that next stair step lower is probably likely over the coming few weeks 
Um, and that's why I give it more of a 60, 65, maybe you know, a third that will hold here, the two thirds that will go to that next level lower. But once again, that's not something that is a huge dramatic event for markets. Uh, it shouldn't be, at least, um, because it's just a natural ebb and flow uh, of things. Okay. So, um, and, in le- and and I'll pull up this ratio as well. So you're starting to see that rollover. So this is the growth to value that I always, uh, always focus on, right? Growth has outperformed since the beginning of the year. June, we had that flat, slightly negative uh, July, and now we're having a certainly negative August, and we get more fall through the downside. We have the NVIDIA earnings next week, so that could be a catalyst. Obviously, NVIDIA is very stretched from a, from a valuation standpoint, and then there's a lot of positive news, positive earnings expectations that are built into the stock price. So they really have to hit it out of the park, uh, I think, for NVIDIA to get uh, some traction to the upside. If this fails, um, that certainly could be that next catalyst for that stair step lower in the NASDAQ. And thus, that's going to feed into the S&P and uh, vol targeting funds. And, uh, you know, just the flows happen, uh, can, can go the other way. And the flows have been positive for equities uh, for pretty much the entire year. You have this, the banking crisis, the VIX going higher, but volatility just throughout the year has been in a downtrend. We started the VIX on the year around 20, you know, in the low 20s. And we recently hit a low, what, in the low teens, around 12, right? And now we're up to the 200 moving average. And that certainly could see a breakout maybe to uh, the, those highs. That's that's certainly a potential over the next few weeks. So it's a very interesting next few weeks uh, coming up. And it'll be uh, something that uh, will tell you a lot of where we're headed and where that ultimate bottom is in this uh, bout of volatility that we're, we're, we're experiencing. Uh, what's making me a bit more bullish and giving me, you know, that, that still, I don't want to say hope, but, you know, cause you don't want to hope you want to analyze and, and put odds on things, you know, nothing is for sure, but you know, based on the evidence and that's what we're looking at, we're looking at evidence and signals in the market. Uh, you, you have to, you can put odds, uh, on what, uh, what might happen in the future. Now the move index, that one, it's moved up here. And obviously, this is the volatility of the bond market. And that's only about 120, which is interesting considering the 10 year. Remember, anything over 150, that's where kind of there's disorder in the bond market. This has been an orderly rise in the 10 year, all the way up to about four and a quarter. Uh, and that certainly is going to weigh on any, any duration assets. Okay. So here is the aggregate bond index, obviously, that pulling back. Uh, pretty dramatically. Uh, but what's interesting is the yield curve is steeping. You see SHY, this isn't moving down accordingly, right? This is actually rallying. This is showing rates dropping over the past month and a half, whereas the 10-year has obviously rates have gone uh, pretty dramatically over the last uh, month and a half. So that yield curve is certainly uh, shifting. And, uh, you know, is that disorder? Obviously, the Fed is, or the Treasury is issuing a lot of more long duration assets that's pulling liquidity out of the market and putting pressure on long rates to move higher. And that's what you've seen over the past couple of months. And that's why you're seeing rates move up. So something to watch for, do we get a breakout or back to levels in November that causes some disorder? Do we get a breakout in the move index and interest rates that causes some level of panic? And I think that's something uh, I'll be watching as well. Now the Bloomberg commodity index, this is interesting. This moved up, bottomed in June, tested the 200-day moving average, and it has a has had a relatively orderly pullback here, still in you know series of higher highs and higher lows, right? This would be the level here I talked, I think, last week about. If this breaks below these June lows or end of June lows, you that's where you'd say, okay, commodities are not a new uptrend. Uh, but so far, they are. And what makes me even more confident they're an uptrend is look at the dollar. You know, China is having issues. They're devaluing the, the, the Chinese yuan. Uh, and the dollar is getting a bid. Uh, and after, you know, really a, a nice rollover in the month of, of July, uh, and the big question is, is this going to break out to the upside? So what's interesting is commodities have pulled back. But look how big this move in the dollar is. We're at the highest levels. Oh, going back to last year, right? So you would think that would be heavily weighing on the commodity index. And it's just an orderly, modest pullback. So that relative strength there is speaking volumes uh, about the commodity uh, sector as a whole. Now, gold's pulled back as well. 
that's also not breaking down. Certainly not, you're, you're not liking this, you know, we're not, we're making a lower low. So from a technical perspective, that's uh, one shot across the bow against it. Um, but we're holding, you know, these longer term averages, 100 uh, week moving average, 50 week average, those haven't broken down. You're getting a spike in volume last week. Uh, and typically that could mark uh, the end of uh, the, the more recent uh, pullback. So something to be watching uh, for the the gold market. And the silver to gold ratio, that's another thing. If if gold and precious metals are really going to break down, this ratio is likely to break down. But we actually had an up week. So and holding kind of just in this consolidation pattern over the last, uh, you know, number of weeks here and you know it's certainly neutral not bullish not bearish uh but it'll be interesting to see which way this breaks and that'll tell a lot you're kind of in this wedge pattern here and typically when you're in this wedge pattern uh, it's getting ready to break one way or the other right so you have this and then you could even go here right so which way are we going to break uh, i think that will be something to watch in the coming weeks all right let's see what else do I want to get to uh, credit markets? So we'll look at uh, one of my favorite ratios. So short-term junk to short-term treasuries, and that did break down here, uh, or did have a, a nice down a week, but not really breaking below major, you know, any of these lows. So the credit markets, the yield spreads are widening a bit, but not really breaking out. Another signal to me, this will be another signal along with that move index to really see where if there are stresses, broader stresses that takes you to that next level lower that we talked about on the NYSE, right? Another stair step down into levels that we hadn't seen since early June. So something I'll be on the on the watch for. Uh let's look at can also look at junk bonds to the IEF. Okay, so that one's yeah so here's junk. Holding in there, right? This is junk bonds doing fine. I mean, obviously, junk bonds have, uh, you know, you see this moving down, but remember, yields are going up. And so you would think uh, anything with uh, some level of duration, which uh, I think the J and K duration is around five years, it would have some major breakdown. Not having, excuse me, not having that yet. And something I'm on the watch for uh, to see if that breaks down. Uh, from a sector's perspective, look at energy relatively strong materials that has pulled back but uh you know nothing truly breaking uh to the downside industrials let's look at industrials yeah industrials modest pullback certainly better than the broad index so you can look at uh like an xli to the q right all year this has been underperforming and now this has been since june really grinding to the upside so uh we'll see if this gets a, a breakout and that would probably more of XLI holding in there, right? The industrial's holding in there. We talked about industrial production was strong, et cetera. And then the Q's breaking down and <clears throat> in a big way. And obviously um, there's the still in earnings season talked about NVIDIA and that could be a catalyst as well. Uh, I want to look at ARC. ARC to, let's see. Yeah, so this is arc to the to the to the technology sector. Obviously, arc funds they are more in those, I guess, call them Ponzi stocks. I like to call it. And so, if this is rolling over, it's showing you that uh, money's coming out of the the rougher part of the market. You know, this 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 rally in early December, uh, January was an indication that. Hey, money was flowing back into tech, and uh, some of the the Ponzi type names that were uh, not making money, but you know, liquidity was getting better, and and so forth. And that's was the start of that that rally in tech overall. This is now the opposite, right? You have this really powerful move to the downside, an arc versus the technology sector, and that could be, you know, when when liquidity gets better, it usually helps the the junkier names, call it. And ARC has a lot of those junkier names. When liquidity gets worse, money comes out of the junkier names, right? And that's what you've kind of seen out of late. Um, so I wanted to highlight that. Um, and then Bitcoin. Bitcoin has broken, is starting to break down as well. That's another indicator of liquidity ebbing pretty dramatically. You see this MACD not looking so hot either. So um, yeah, very interesting times. Liquidity is, liquidity is no longer a major 
tailwind. Now, how strong does the headwind get? Is it Hurricane Hillary level uh, strong? We shall see. We'll see. Uh, hopefully everyone, I know it's going to hit us here in California uh, later this weekend, early next week. So hopefully everyone stays safe with that. Um, but from a liquidity perspective, you're definitely seeing a tougher time going forward. Doesn't mean that the market has to roll over in a dramatic fashion, but just more near-term volatility is could be in the cards, okay? So don't be shocked to see this uh, on the NYC, fl NYC flush down to this 15.5 level, 15.250 level, excuse me, um, which would be what's kind of a 3% th drop from here. Nothing too dramatic, um, but likely to see a bounce at least short, short term, and then we'll see over the next couple of weeks. And uh, we'll check in next week. So I appreciate you all tuning in to this channel as well as our podcast and best talk. A reminder, the contests of this video are for edu education purposes only and should not be construed as a recommendation to buy or sell security or to, to participate in investment strategy. The views are my own and do not represent those of KPP Financial or those associated. Have a wonderful weekend.